It is said that we use prayer as a boatman uses a boat hook to pull the boat to the shore and not to try to pull ashore to the boat. It's no wonder peace is hard to come by. There's so many shores that are trying to be pulled. This appears to be the case with Zechariah. Zechariah, or Zecharias, had a very famous son and nephew. His story is a dynamic one, and it goes something like this. Zecharias was a priest in the line of Levi. He married a woman named Elizabeth, who was also a Levite of the line of Aaron. Their destinies were tied to service in the temple. He served in the division of Abijah. There were 24 divisions of priests, all named after 24 descendants of Aaron. Now, both Zecharias and Elizabeth were found to be righteous before God and blameless. As for character, that's not too shabby. They were childless because Elizabeth was barren. This appeared to be the lot in life that eventually they accepted. Now, serving in the temple, Zecharias probably prayed about this often, but as seasons passed by, they were still without children. Now, it's approaching the first Noel. Only no one knows this at the time. Zecharias was chosen by Lot in his division to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to offer the incense. Now, I need to tell you that this is a big deal. Zechariah serves in the afternoon public offering, and as far as assignments go in the priesthood, this was basically a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You see, in the afternoon sacrifice, the incense was last, and the assigned priests and two assistants carried burning coals from the great altar into the chamber of the holy place to burn the incense on the altar of incense, made of gold-plated wood and located in the center of the room before the veil separating the holy place from the most holy place. Now the assistants would exit the room, leaving the priest alone in the sanctuary as he would lay the incense on the coals at the signal of the presiding high priest and prostrate himself in prayer. This was the closest that anyone could ever get to the Holy of Holies who wasn't the high priest. Zecharias must have felt some extreme performance anxiety and pressure. The scriptures tell us that there was a great crowd waiting outside for this portion of the worship. It was at this time an angel, Gabriel, appears and informs him that Elizabeth is to be with child and that, this is, that his name is to be John. Now John is to be pure and will be the forerunner of the coming Messiah and will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Zechariah is asked to believe that God will once again give child to an older barren couple. Only Zechariah doesn't believe this and responds, how will I know this? Well, the sign he asks Gabriel for is actually a punitive one. He's to be mute or unable to speak for the entire duration of the pregnancy. For all his righteousness, Zechariah was not at peace. Perhaps his hopes had been raised so many times in the past and then dashed that he could not bring himself to even dare to believe. He did not want to go through the pain of disappointment again. Perhaps the routine of all his priestly activity caused him to forget that God remembers and fulfills promises. If it is true that this kind of hope is like oxygen for the soul, then Zechariah needed an oxygen tank and a respirator. Now, it is possible that in praying, Christians can only go through the motions without faith that God will answer. There may be little interest in seeing how God might answer those prayers. A lack of anticipation that anything will ever change can lead to spiritual languor, which in turn leads to a voice that is mute about the hope and peace that God's promise has awakened. The Christmas season, as Zechariah learned the hard way, is a season that ushers in peace the question is, do you believe this? Or are you hardened like Zechariah was, going through the seasonal motions and responding with, how will I know? Zechariah does not speak the entire duration of Elizabeth's pregnancy. The scripture says that the boy is born and on the eighth day they came to circumcise him. Those that were with him assumed that they would name the boy Zechariah after his father. But it was actually Elizabeth who said, no, he will be called John. This confused everyone, and they pleaded with her because that was not the family name. Zechariah grabbed a tablet and wrote, His name is John. Now the Bible says that he was immediately freed from his inability to speak, and everyone was in awe. We are fortunate because we have record of Zechariah's words when he was finally able to vocalize them. 
filled with the Holy Spirit, he said this, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us under the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give us light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Let's join Zechariah in the singing of peace that is greater than relief from strife or war, but is all that life was intended to be by God, sound, whole, and well in our being. Thank you. 